Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're seeing this then some or perhaps even all of this project has worked so, so that's a good thing. Um, we've had a, an upgrade in the shack. Uh, you remember a couple of videos back this um, 20 meter vertical dipole that I used successfully that even on a dead band uh, and that was attached to the DX Commander Expedition but uh, I was struggling for, for length for the dipole. The dipole is longer than the pole. So here we've now got a uh, a DX Commander Signature 12, so this is about a 12 and a half meter. The Expedition's about nine and a half, something like that. So we've got the extra length. Right, so the project. Uh, I'm gonna, as I said at the last video, I had uh, plans for this 20 meter dipole, vertical dipole. I'm going to try and make a multi-band vertical dipole. So sleeveless sleeve dipole, multi-band setup. No radials, just uh, just vertical dipoles. Hopefully, all in harmony. So, the first thing I did was try and figure out how to make a, make a full set of dipoles work together. Um, this choke, you will know from the previous video, defines the bottom of the antenna. So, what I want to do is use this one choke to feed multiple tips. So, we'll have the same base, same one single coax plug, but multiple tips off this uh, choke. So like I said at the start of the video, some or all of this project worked. Well, all of it didn't. Uh, I've had to take a, a plan B. Um, the original intention was to feed multiple tips from one, one plug, a bit like a ground mounted vertical, a multi-band vertical does where the uh, the resonant tip takes, takes all the uh, RF. Uh, well, in this coax fed uh, dipole model, that doesn't seem to work. Uh, so I've, uh, having tried that, I've abandoned that m method uh, and now I'm going to feed separate multi-tips that you can plug in uh, as, you, as you wish. Well, well it was a perfectly good antenna but here goes. Crikey. And in this design you have to remember that left hand piece of coax going to the choke is also part of the antenna so that's seven and a half centimetres in this case I have to allow for that when I'm cutting the tips. There's a gap you can see in the barrel but that's so small I don't think it matters in relation to the overall length of the antennas. Right I've got the Signature 12 out on the lawn. It's a cracking pole, it's a good solid much thicker wall pole than the portable uh, DX Commanders. It comes with these uh, clamps which I've labelled and trimmed so you would have seen these on other DX Commander uh, antennas. So just in case sliding them down and connecting them to each section just to stop the uh, the sections collapsing in on themselves so I'll do that next. Right the clamps are all on the good thing about them is uh, when you slacken them off by just slacken them off slightly when you slide them on the pole they all go to their respective positions and don't slip any further so it's dead easy to get them back on. Um, anyone who's thinking ahead uh, will be wondering how I'm going to get multiple antennas up this. Um, I could just tape them to the pole what I might do is make a spreader plate of some description um, you can buy spreader plates from DX Commander uh, for this pole, but just for experimentation purposes, I might uh, I might have to make my own. Right, I'm going to lash the 20 meter to this, starting at the top and working down, and see uh, see how we get on. Hopefully, it still works. Right, we're on. A cable tied on there, lashed to the spare wheel. It's a bit bluey. I need a ground spike really. So we're up in the sky. I just want to do a quick test to see that this still works as a 20. I think we were on 14.2 I think on the last video and about 2 to 1 so here we go where's the dip so we're a bit short 14.4 1.9 uh, so yes yeah, still usable 2 this is because it's up a full height now. SUR2 in the 20 meter band, so the dip's a little high, but not achieving much more. 1.9. Mm. Got 14 on the. Yeah, that's right. So that's a good start. So it still works as a 20. So I haven't, I haven't messed it up. It's worth mentioning here. Clearly, I'm mounting this above the car, so there's a big chunk of metal under this antenna. If you're mounting in your backyard or garden and you're on a pole then you might get different if not better results. 
Right, we've got 20 and 17 on the uh, pole, 20's plugged in. So we'll just see how adding uh, 17's affected 20. And this is the dip, uh, 1.4 at 14.3. It's a little bit short, the antenna, the frequency is a bit high. But if we go down into the 200's, you can see there, 1.5, 1.4. So it's actually improved the performance of the 20 meter wire by adding the 17. So hopefully 17 is okay, so really happy with that. 1.6 at 14200. Right, I'll plug in 17. Right, so we've got 17 plugged in and 20 is loose and not touching. And this is the hottest day of the year so far, which is proving fun. I had to pause this project a while back because we had strong winds for a week. Right, 17, so 20's obviously gone way out now because it's not plugged in. Uh, so we want 18.13 something. Oh, ooh, there's a dip. There's a big dip at 16.3. That doesn't board well. Right, so that's where we want to be. Uh, right, so the wires are interacting. So if we trim 17, because at the moment it's too long, uh, and see how that goes. We need it to be there, which is way out. And hopefully it won't affect 20. Right, here we go. Right, so here's the, uh, the junction on the 17 metre element. Because it's just a long way out, I'm tempted to cut 10 centimetres off, which would be 20 off the top, 10 off here which makes the tip longer, and then 20 off the tip to bring it back in. So, but I don't, in case I make it too short. So I'm gonna go at five and uh, see how that works. So I'll trim away and uh, I'll let you know I'll get on once I've got to where I need to be. Right, I've had a merry little dance with this. I've cut out five, sevens, tens. You can see all the cuts I've made, which is a lot of pole upping and downing. Uh, here we are now on 17. Uh, 18.13 where we want to be, 1.1 um, so really happy with that, the dip's a little bit lower if you look at that meter there, go down, up, down so it's at the very bottom of the band um, but one thing I found is and I think that was part of my cutting uh, one thing I found is the coax can't touch because uh, it knocks things out, so this is the bottom obviously, but I've tried to have the coax going up both sides of the pole and with the pole going up and down so many times, some of it's moved and if the coax touches you get some uh, odd results uh, Still running without spreader plates, so now uh, Now 17 is okay. I'm just going to plug in 20 and see that 20 is still fine. Right, I've swapped over See that doesn't work now back down to 20 Fingers crossed. Yeah, we're still all right. 1.4. The dips. It's a little high where we left it. But yeah, 1.4 in the band. So we've got 20 and 17 now. Right, I've added 15. You can see the three plugs there. I've labelled them up so I know what's what now. So we've got 20, 17 and 15. I'll give you the measurement of this in a sec. Let's zoom out back to normal. So 50 metres is 21 to 21, 450. And here, if you can see, uh, where's the dip? There's a right sharp dip there. Just above the band, 21, 48. We've got down into the band. It's uh, 2, where's, well, there, 21.2, 21.3. So it's still usable, and if you go right down the bottom of the band, I can tune that out. Uh, if you're in the CWN, just under 3. Um, so I've cut this one a little bit too short. Uh, it is actually the same length as the 15 metre standalone one I made uh, a while back. Uh, and on the grounds I was cutting the 17 over and over again, I thought, well, I'll start with what it was. Um, but obviously it's a little bit short 
and obviously, well not obviously but with this multiband method it's better to be long than short um, because I can't let anything out now yeah well 17 still okay now for 20 yeah 20 still okay as well 1.4 so we've got 20 17 and 15 all together now well at this point I'd normally fire up the rig in the car and do some on-air tests but it's just literally too hot um, so watch out for part two and I'll give you the measurements and on an air test and see how we get on thanks for watching